Good day, students. Welcome to class time. Bonjour, les élèves. Bienvenue à class time. I am Kristen Blake. Et je m'appelle Antoine Williams. And we are your French teachers for this session. Today, we are going on an unforgettable summer experience. At the end of today's lesson, you will be able to describe a summer vacation you had. Also, you will be able to recount past events using the passé composé and the imperfect tense. Also, you'll be able to write an informal letter in French. Now, you're going to be listening to a conversation, right? Between myself and Antoine. Listen carefully so that you'll be able to answer these questions. First question, how is Kristen doing? Next, where is Antoine coming from? Number three, to which country did he travel? Number four, what was the reason for his trip? And number five, state two questions that Kristen asked about his trip. Now, get your pens and your paper and let's go. Salut Kristen, ça va? Oui, ça va, mais tu es, tu es allé où? Tu viens d'où? Oui, de l'aéroport. Ah. En fait, je suis arrivé il y a une demi-heure et je suis venu directement ici afin de ne pas rater cette leçon. Oh, tu es allé où alors? Ah, j'ai voyagé en Guadeloupe pour le mariage de mon frère aîné. Ah, tu blagues! Hein? J'ai tant de questions. Mais c'était comment l'expérience? Est-ce qu'ils ont pleuré? Euh, oui. oui. <rire> ah, c'était comment... Il faisait comment pendant la cérémonie? Ah, mais tu as beaucoup de questions. Oui, j'ai tant de questions. On va en parler après. Et maintenant, il faut enseigner. D'accord. All right, so I'm going to see what you all heard today. So, let's do it again. Sure. <laughs> Écoutez bien. Salut, Chrisanne. Ça va? Oui, ça va. Quoi de nous, Antoine? Où? Oui, je vais bien. D'où viens-tu? De l'airport? Oui, en fait... Je suis arrivé il y a une demi-heure et je suis venu directement ici afin de ne pas rater cette leçon. Ah, et tu es allé où alors? J'ai voyagé en Guadeloupe pour le mariage de mon frère aîné. Wow, tu blagues. J'ai tant de questions. Tu étais là pendant combien de temps? Hmm? C'est comment le décor? Ils ont choisi quelle couleur? Ah, quel temps faisait-il lors de la cérémonie? Est-ce qu'on a pleuré? Tes parents étaient-ils là aussi? So, All that right. was our little, little dialogue. So, let's see if you can answer the questions. How is Christian doing? Where is Antoine coming from? I know you got it right. To which country did he travel? For what reason yes. was the trip? And what are two questions that Kristen asked? Okay, let's look at it together. Be sure to put those ticks where you got them right. And if you made any mistakes, you can correct them as you go. The aim is to learn. Okay, so here we are. Number one. So, so for number one, the answer was she's doing well. Christian had said, je vais bien. Right. And for number two, where is Antoine coming from? He's coming from the airport. And as you can see, he has a suitcase there. Oui, une valise. Number three, to which country did he travel? I hope you'd have heard Guadeloupe. Yes, on Guadeloupe. What was the reason for his trip? Ah, 
it was the wedding of my older brother. Definitely. And of course, I'm sure you have more than two questions that I asked, but here are all of them. So number one, for how long were you there? What was the decor like? What colors did they choose? What was the weather like on the day of the ceremony? And did anyone cry? <laughs> and were your parents there as well? Quite a lot of questions, right, Anto? Quite a lot of questions. Yes. <laughs> we, we tend to get excited when, when it comes on to weddings. All righty. Okay, so students, tell me, what tenses did you identify in the conversation? Let's mm. give them a clue. Well, you should have identified two primary tenses. Those are what we're looking for. There may have been more, but we're looking for two. So let's see what they are, Chrisanne. Mm -hmm. Le passé composé. Et l'autre? C'est l'imparfait. Ouais. Super. All righty. So, voici quelques exemples avec le passé composé dans la conversation. Je suis arrivé il y a une demi-heure. Mm -hmm. J'ai voyagé en Guadeloupe pour le mariage de mon frère aîné. Et tu es allé où alors? I'm sure you were able to identify all those sentences in the passé composé. All right. So just a quick reminder. There are two auxiliary verbs used to form the passé composé. Avoir and être. Mm -hmm. Also, be sure to revise which verbs take each auxiliary verb. So I know that can be a little tricky, but just study them. And also to help you, you can up over to French Action on YouTube and check out the videos on the Passé Composé. There is one in particular called Seven Ways to Remember to Be Verbs in the Passé Composé. All right, students, so make sure to check it out. All right, so now, we're going to be looking at some examples from the imperfect tense. Right. And as you can tell, both tenses are past tenses. So, quel temps faisait-il lors de la cérémonie? Mm -hmm. And can you tell us what is that verb in the imperfect tense? You get it right. Bravo. Oui, faisait. Tes parents étaient-ils présents aussi? Mm -hmm. And of course, the verb is été. Mm -hmm. Tu étais là pendant combien de temps? All right. One more. C'était comment le décor? Oui, oui. Excellent. And I'm sure you understand all those questions. So now... We're going to explore a little, okay? Explorons ensemble. And we're doing this by way of a letter, all right? So, comme vous voyez, Kingston, 10 décembre 2020. All right. So, Antoine. Oh, oui? Go right ahead. Let's On va hear. lire. Yes. Lisons. Cher Elodie. Je t'écrire pour te dire d'une expérience horrifiante que j'ai vécue il y a deux ans. C'était en été. Je suis allé faire une promenade en radeau sur la Martha Bray avec ma famille. Mm. Il faisait tellement beau et la rivière était calme. Mm. Au début, j'avais peur de monter sur le radeau. Néanmoins, avec l'encouragement de mes parents... Je suis finalement monté. Mes parents et mes frères m'ont suivi et ils sont montés sur le radeau sans souci. Mm. Wow, c'est très intéressant. Très intéressant. On continue? Oui. Oui. 
Le radeau s'est déroulé. Tout allait bien, puis j'ai entendu un cri étrange qui provenait du fond de l'eau. J'étais terrifié. Mm. « C'est quoi ça, maman ?» j'ai demandé. Mais ma mère m'a dit que je devais rester calme et m'asseoir. C'était dur. Mm. J'ai essayé de rester calme. Mais après quelques minutes, j'ai vu quelque chose de noir qui traversait la rivière. Il était très gros. Mm. « C'est un crocodile oh. !» J'ai crié « Au secours Au secours !» Je me suis levé pour bien voir l'animal. Mais j'ai perdu mon équilibre. Et je suis tombé splash dans l'eau. Wow. Ni mes parents, ni mes frères savaient nager. Alors le capitaine du radeau est venu me sauver. Quel jour horrible Enfin, on a découvert que la chose que j'ai vue dans l'eau, c'était juste une pièce de bois. C'était bien sûr un été inoubliable pour moi. Wow Wow. C'est très intéressant. Est-ce que vous avez compris tout le monde? Did you understand? All right, so we're going to go through um, some of the examples that we had in this passage with the passé composé and the imperfect tense. All right? Quand, quand utilisons-nous le passé composé et l'imparfait? Ok, I can see you thinking about it, oui, réfléchissez. Très bien. All right. So, ok. So the imperfect tense is used to say what was taking place when another interrupted. But before, we're going to actually go through the passage so that you can understand exactly what was taking place. All right. Okay? We want you also to take note of the format of the letter because when you go to do your exams for CXC, there's a particular way in which they want you to set the letter up. And mm -hmm. there's no sense losing easy marks when all you need to do is lay out the letter properly right. on the paper. Definitely. So for example, let's look at the address. Mm -hmm. For the address, all you need to put is the city or town from which you're writing, right. followed by the date. And we write the date in French every day, so this is definitely not going to be a problem for you. So there we have it, Kingston, le 10 décembre 2020. Mm -hmm. Then we have our salutation. So for informal letters, which are the requirement for CXC, you'll be using share, mm -hmm. whether in the masculine or in the feminine form. All right, so let's ask them, what would it be if we were writing to, say, Sebastian. Sebastian. Mm -hmm. So, given that you asked me about Sebastian, I can tell that right now we're writing to a female. That would be Elodie. And mm -hmm. students, it's always good to know some French names. Mm -hmm. It's really good when you, if you say you're writing to a French pen pal, you know, you, they can have English names, but if you have a French name, that will definitely show that you're thinking culturally as well. Right. So if you were Sebastian, we know that where we have share avec le e, e accent, oui. Ouais, we would remove the accent grave from right. the first e and we would also remove mm. the last e. So we'd be left with C-H-E-R, C-H-E-R. Oh, voilà. There you go. So, then we can see that we have the letter. So it's a letter about the summer vacations as we would have explained before. So you want to start off, you know, in a little, to build the rapport between yourself and the person to whom you are addressing the letter. Mm -hmm. So, Michael and Elodie have a relationship. They have a little thing going. Right. And he said, I'm writing to you to tell you about a horrifying, you know, one of those horrible experiences that I would have experienced or that I've ever had two years ago. Mm -hmm. It's important that you give some structure to it because when the examiners are going to check, they want to know, do they know the correct verbs to use? Do they understand the tense that mm -hmm. they're supposed to be manipulating? And how is it that they move from one stage to the next. So obviously, you can't just jump from share to start saying, oh, au revoir. That <laughs> will definitely not work. You can't move from there to saying goodbye. So you lay out the format, and as we're going to see when we go further down to describe the different tenses, 
particularly the imperfect tense and the passé composé, you will note that the imperfect tense is what we're using to kind of set the background. So we're setting the background so a person understands mm -hmm. what's going on, and then we use the passé composé to move the story along. Right. All right. So the f uh, Antoine just explained to you that, yes, I w I'm writing to tell you about an experience, a horrifying experience that I had two years ago. Now, Ilia means ago, right? So that's an expression that you might need to jot down so you can use it in your letters or whatever you're writing. So sete onete. So you need to tell them what, what was the setting like, you know? When was it? It was during the summer. So, je suis allé faire une promenade en radeau. Now, what is that saying, Antoine? So, I would have gone for a little spin on the raft. So, I'd have gone rafting. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, the picture kind of gives you an idea. We want for those visual learners to be able to picture what it is that we are going on. As we note that we've spoken about the Martha Bray. So, definitely, you can tell that Michael would be Jamaican or he was visiting Jamaica mm -hmm. two years ago when he went on this trip. When you write your letters, CXC would normally ask you perhaps to write about a French Caribbean territory or a French territory in general that you would have visited. So my encouragement to you is this. Make sure you do some research on the French Caribbean territories. Right. Look up at Guadeloupe, Martinique, even Haiti. Make sure you know something. So when you're writing your letter, you're not just saying, you know, I went to the park. You can go to the park in Jamaica. So use some of those very interesting cultural facts. So your cultural awareness will definitely earn you points when it comes to CXC. So make sure you do that research so that you can get as many marks as possible. Right. Okay, so you, it was on the Martha Bray. All right, great. So what, what exactly happened here? Well, everything seemed to have started off well. Mm -hmm. The river was calm. Oui, c'était calm. La right. rivière était calme. Mm -hmm. And then we see that, you know, there was a bit of fear and apprehension there. Mm. We don't know how old Michael was, but let's say he was five. <laughs> so Michael decided that he was a bit afraid to go on the raft. Right. But, you know, parents and his brothers, his siblings, would have encouraged him and he would have hopped onto the raft. Mm -hmm. Then things kind of got a bit shaky. Right. And note... The tenses that are used here when things change, okay? So mm -hmm. something was happening and then another event inter intercepted it. All right. Right. So Michael's on the raft, his parents are on the raft, siblings are on the raft, and they move off. Then Michael decides that he wants to have some wild experience. So he hears something, mm -hmm. he hears a noise coming from the bottom of the water, and he's terrified. He shouts out, he would say in general, <laughs> I want that mommy. But you know, he said it in English, sure. What's that, mommy? So he asked his mother what it was, but he said, boy, keep yourself calm. Sit down. Calm Nothing's the matter. Mm -hmm. So he was calm for a while. And afterwards, you know, he saw something moving. And then he decided to shout, help, help, it's a crocodile. <laughs> oui. But at the end of the day, what happened is that it wasn't really a crocodile. But Michael, let's you know ask that, them. I wonder if they oh, figured it out. What okay. was it that was moving in the water? I can hear you. Yes, Sylvie. Wee oui, wee oui, wee. Oui. Yes, it was a piece of wood. It was right. a piece of log. It was just a piece of log. So you can just imagine how horrifying that was. He right. thought it was a crocodile. But All it's right. interesting that he thought it was a crocodile, but he managed to fall into the water. <laughs> not the safest thing, students. Not the safest thing right. to do. Right. Because he was, uh, you know, he wanted to see what it was. And then he fell. And notice the word tombe, which is um, used, when in, used in the passé composé, it is used with which verb? Et. Mm -hmm. The helping verb et. All right. So we're going to now go and explore um, what are some of the uses of the imperfect and some of the uses of the passé composé. Alrighty. So I know that you're already thinking and you have your answers. All right. So Antoine, number one. Right. So we have the table set up for comparison. So let's see how we do. So number one, the imperfect tense is used to say what was taking place when another action interrupted it. So. 
this action being described by the imperfect tense is an incomplete action. We don't know when it ended or even if it ended. Mm -hmm. Here's an example. Tout allait bien, puis j'ai entendu un bruit étrange. Mm -hmm. So the verb in the imperfect tense would be aller. Allez. And right. remember how to form the imperfect tense, correct? Yes. Actually, I have a little song. So it goes, a i s a i s a i t e i o n s i u z a i u n t e a i s a i s a i t e i o n s i u z a i u n t e and that's to remember the endings for the imperfect tense. And with that rendition, you can see why I didn't come by myself today. <laughs> so, we have ale because that was explaining what was the state. Everything was going well. We don't know if it stopped or if it ended, but it was going well. All right. So for the passé composé, or let's just go through all of them for the imperfect tense. So for the imperfect tense, it says, it's used to describe a repeated or habitual action. Repeated. Mm -hmm habitual actions again in the past. So it's, the, it's explaining what happened an indefinite number of times. It's good to underline the word indefinite, so we don't know how many. So here's another example. Quelque chose noir qui traversait la rivière. Mm -hmm. So it was. Yes, it was going across the river. Across okay. the river. All right, so we're going to look at the other one. Number so number three says, it's used to describe an ongoing state of being or feeling in the past. Au début, j'avais peur de monter sur le radeau. So I was feeling fearful. That was my state of being. Mm -hmm. Number four, is used to set the background for an account. For example, to tell what the weather was like. So from the letter we know that il faisait beau. Oui. It was good weather. So normally the weather goes in the imperfect tense. Right. Right, so that's for the imperfect. Let's look now to the passé composé. All right, so with the passé composé, this describes a completed action in the past. It happened and that's it. So we're done, the action is done, it's completed. J'ai crié, for example. J'ai crié. I shouted and that's it. It was a one off event, one time. All right, the next one says, describes an action that occurred at a definite number of times in the past. So, here we have, j'ai vu quelque chose noir qui traverse la rivière. Uh, j'ai vu here indicates it only happened once. So, in the moment I saw something, it happened and finished one time. All right? Once. Also, the passé composé is used to describe a change in state of being. So, at a point I was this way, but then... My state changed. So, j'ai perdu mon équilibre. I lost my balance. Mm -hmm. All right? J'ai perdu mon équilibre. And the last one, the passé composé is used to move a narration along. Right? Enfin, on a découvert que. For example, on a découvert. So, we discovered. Right? And this is to help to bring the story along. All right? I think you learned quite a lot so let's practice practicons pratiquons tout le monde all right alors regardez chaque photo et décrivez avec une phrase une expérience d'été vraie ou imaginée so look at each picture and use one sentence to describe a summer experience and this experience can either be real meaning you've lived it or it can be imagined all right, so guess what? I want you to practice using both the imperfect and the passé composé in the same sentence. On y va. Get your books and pens ready. All right. Voici une photo. Voici la photo. Réfléchissez, s'il vous plaît. Think about it. Write your, your sentence. All right. I think for those in Portland, this should be an easy sentence to this write. This should be very easy. Very easy sentence to write. C'est très facile pour eux. Oui. Okay, let's see what we have. We have a suggestion, right, Antoine? Yes, we do. Let's All see right, it. All right, let's go. La rivière était très calme quand Monsieur Biggie a commencé le tour. 
Right. So whoever Mr. Big is, big up yourself. <laughs> so, la rivière était calme. So we see that the first verb is in the imperfect tense. It's describing the, the setting. This is how it was. And then we see, quand Mr. Big a commencé le tour. So he started the tour. He's not still starting, but he started the, the trip on the raft. So it, the action has ended. Okay? Right. And ete, no, it, il était calme, that's describing how the atmosphere was, right? Mm -hmm. All right, great. So let's look at this picture. Hmm. I'm sure for Jamaicans, for you, this is a very, you know, something that you might do or yeah. see all the time. Looks like when Helsha was really, really populated. But no, COVID is there, stay home, people, stay home. <laughs> Restez chez vous, alors. On y va. Let's see our sentence. Les enfants nageaient dans la plage quand le sauveteur a vu un requin. Wow. Can you imagine how terrifying that must have been? Could have been exciting as well, you know. Some people take those things very lightly. All right. Not Do you wise. think the students know what is un requin? Un requin? Un requin? Definitely. All right. So, yes, a shark. They saw, the lifeguard saw a shark while they were swimming. Wow. All right. Oh, Lord. Okay, so I think I gave you this quickly. Ah, they got the sentence before. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So, il faisait très beau et ma famille et moi sommes allés à Reach Falls. Right. So there again, remember in the beginning we had said we use the imperfect tense to kind of set the scene or to tell the weather. Mm -hmm. Here's an example of where we're using to tell the weather. Il faisait très beau. It was very good weather. And my family and I, we went to Reach Falls. All right, très bien. Okay, regardez cette image. Ce, im ce image. Cette image, oui. A lot of things come to mind. <laughs> Lots of things. Well, let's see what yes. we have. Le chien de mon voisin me poursuivait, donc je suis monté à l'arbre. Mm. Hmm. So once again, we can see what was happening. There was a chase going on, a heavy chase. You're running from your neighbor's dog. And to avoid the dog, you just run up into the tree. You climb the tree. I want us to note, as we're going on as well, don't miss out on the chance to practice with your pronunciation. So we see the chien, voisin. Those nasal sounds are what you'll really need, especially when oral exams will come up. So practice them. Yes. Excellent. All right. So, of course, we have homework for you, Duvois. All right, but do you think we need to go over anything at all in the lesson? Maybe we should ask them some questions? Sure. Mm -hmm. I hope I can hear them from this far. <laughs> so, even as we looked at the passé composé and the imperfect tense, there are a couple things that I believe we may have skipped over. Because, as you can tell, we're not trying to teach you the tenses. We're trying to compare the use of the imperfect and the passé composé. So right. if you would be so kind as to go back to the letter, there are a few things that I want to point out where the passé composé is concerned. All right, let's go. On y va. So as we would have said, we use the passé composé with two auxiliary verbs, avoir and être. Mm -hmm. We note as well that être is normally the verb which takes agreement. Right. So the subject matters when it comes to être verbs. For avoir, we kind of take it a bit more lightly because, you know, we don't need to agree. Except there are cases in which the past participle must agree even though it is used with avoir. avoir. So let's look at a few of those. Go back right. to the beginning of the letter for me. So, in the very first line, you will note where it says, Je t'ai cru pour te dire d'une expérience horrifiante que j'ai vécu. Did you notice that there was an E or an extra E at the end of vécu? It's an avoir verb. But the reason why we have the E is because when you have a, a, a direct object coming before the avoir verb in the passé composé, mm -hmm. you have to make the agreement. Right. In this case, it would have been replaced by que. 
So right. it says, une expérience horrifiante que. So you're using that introduction from the que to refer back to experience the experience. And you can tell that experience is feminine. Therefore, you need to add the E. Right. These are the final points that really make you stand out in the eyes of the examiner. So make sure you take good note of them. There was another one closer to the end. So let's look at that one as well. So let me see. I'll give you 30 seconds to see if you can spot this one. Okay, I'll just give you three. So I'll give you three seconds to spot this one. And I'll give you a clue as well. This one is in the second to last line. Can you spot where the agreement was with the in, sorry, with the direct, let's get it right, with the direct object of the verb in the passé composé? Good. Very good. Très bien. You've spotted it. I believe it. <laughs> so right there. Christian, point it forth. Point it out first. Oui, c'est j'ai vu. Okay? Enfin, on a découvert que la chose que j'ai vu. So notice there's an E. Um, so it's V-U-E. Normally, the past participle of voir is just vu. However, in this case, la chose, which is the direct, direct object, yes. object actually precedes it. So you'll have to agree in gender, right? So it now becomes J view with an E. Voila. Ah, and Christian made a very important point as well. The agreement is both in number and gender. When mm -hmm. we say number, we mean singular or plural. When we say gender, we We're mean masculine about. or feminine. So there weren't, there wasn't any that had to agree in number as it relates to being plural, mm -hmm. but we had for the gender. So please make a note of those, grab your textbooks, ask your teacher how the rule applies and where best to use it. All right, great. Okay, so we're going to now go on to homework, right? You're going to be writing a letter for yourself and we actually want to see what you have written, okay? So first of all, let us go through what is required. And as Christian said, we want to see what you write. So at the end of the program, we will give you the email address or perhaps if you want to use WhatsApp to send it to us, we'll give you that information so you can have those sent to us and we can give you feedback. Definitely. Okay, écoutez bien. Write a letter to your French pen pal about an unforgettable summer experience you had. Now, you're going to use one of the four pictures as stimulus. So let me just go back so you can remember what those pictures are. All right, let's go. So the first one is a man on a raft. Okay. La deuxième, c'est à la plage. Mm -hmm. La troisième, c'est à une cascade. No, yeah, reach oui, reach falls. Et la dernière, c'est dans un arbre. Oh, oui. oui. Okay. So think about something exciting that could have happened, you know, in these, in this summer using these pictures as your guide. And again, we want to encourage you, although you're very familiar with Jamaica and you have your own experiences here, get practice talking about one of those other places, one of those French territories it will serve you very, very well when it comes to CXC time. So don't just take this lightly. So when you see the waterfall, imagine that it's found somewhere else. Guadeloupe, Martinique, oui. wherever it is. And remember, you, there are also African territories which are French-speaking. speak French, oui. Exactly. So don't limit yourself just to the Caribbean. Do some research and go ahead. Okay, so this is the instruction. Write a letter to a French pen pal about an unforgettable summer experience you had. Use one of the four pictures as a stimulus. Okay? Also, make sure to include the following details. The date and time of the event, as well as the weather conditions. Also, you should say who were the persons there. Was it with your mom and dad, brothers, sisters, and so on? And also, you must say, this, give a description of an unexpected event that took place, okay? 
you should also say how you felt about the experience or how you currently feel about the experience. Right. We? And uh. of course, you know that we are expecting you to write in the Passé, passé Composé et l'âme parfait. Very good. Très bien. All right, so send your homework to levelupyourfrench at gmail.com or by WhatsApp at 508-9943. Maybe we should say that in French. Say, oui, oui. Catavan set, 65, 08, Catavan 19, 43. Oui, oui, oui. All right, our level up your French at gmail.com.